Andrei Sneznevsky, Wikipedia article audio. Andrei Vladimirovich Sneznevsky, 20 May 1904, Kostroma July 12, 1987, Moscow was a Soviet psychiatrist whose name was lent to the unbridled broadening of the diagnostic borders of schizophrenia in the Soviet Union, the key architect of the Soviet concept of sluggish schizophrenia, the inventor of the term sluggish schizophrenia, an embodier of history of repressive psychiatry, and a direct participant in psychiatric repression against dissidents. He was an academician of the USSR Academy of Medical Sciences, 221 the director of the Serbsky Institute for Forensic Psychiatry, 221 the director of the Institute of Psychiatry of the USSR Academy of Medical Sciences, 220 and the director of the All Union Mental Health Research Center of the USSR Academy of Medical Sciences. At the height of his power, Sneznevsky dominated the whole of Soviet psychiatry. He forced the psychiatric community in the USSR and in many of its Eastern European satellites to adopt the diagnosis of sluggish schizophrenia as dogma. Starting in the early 1950s, Sneznevsky opposed the concept of soft schizophrenia but later promoted the same idea under a different title slow-flowing, or sluggish. The term sluggish schizophrenia was invented by Sneznevsky and became widespread by the 1960s. The prevalence of Sneznevsky's theories directly led to a broadening of the boundaries of disease such that even the mildest behavioral change could be interpreted as indication of mental disorder. 40 Despite his power and virtual monopolies on textbooks and conferences, some prominent Soviet doctors were unwilling to accept Sneznevsky's methods, such as Iosif Polichuk in Kiev, and Fyodor Detengov in Dushanbe. Sluggish Schizophrenia Political Abuse of Psychiatry Sneznevsky was long attacked in the West as an exemplar of political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union. He was charged with cynically developing a system of diagnosis which could be bent for political purposes and, in dozens of cases, he personally signed a commission decision on legal insanity of mentally healthy dissidents including Vladimir Bukovsky, Natalia Gorbanevskia, Leonid Plyushch, Mikola Plakhotnyuk, Pyotr Grigorenko. Some of Sneznevsky's employees say that one day in a selected auditorium, when discussing the situation in the country, he also gave the diagnosis of sluggish schizophrenia to Andrei Sakharov in absentia. Also in absentia, he diagnosed Joseph Brodsky with the same disease and concluded that he was not a valuable person at all. As Oli Walansky noted, Professor Sneznevsky did not hesitate to act against principles of the Hippocratic Oath. On the covert orders of the KGB, thousands of social and political reformers Soviet dissidents were incarcerated in mental hospitals after being labeled with diagnoses of sluggish schizophrenia, a disease fabricated by Sneznevsky and Moscow School of Psychiatry. The belief that career development depended on loyalty to the party and that the party and its interests were cardinal can partly explain why Sneznevsky, who earnestly defended the rights of his patients at the frontline hospital during the massive destruction of World War II, also employed his scientific regalia and academic title to legitimate the psychiatric confinement of dissenters. However, Alexander Tyganov, a pupil of Sneznevsky and full member of the Russian Academy of Medical Sciences, believes his teacher was honest in his diagnosing dissenters. In 2011, Tyganov said it was rumored that Sneznevsky took pity on dissenters and gave them a diagnosis required for placing in a special hospital to save them from a prison, but it was not true, he honestly did his medical duty.
The same ideas are voiced in the 2014 interview by Anatoly Smulovic, a pupil of Sneznevsky, full member of the Russian Academy of Medical Sciences. He says what was attributed to Sneznevsky was that he recognized the healthy as the ill, it did not happen and is pure slander, it is completely ruled out for him to give a diagnosis to a healthy person. In 1980, the Special Committee on the Political Abuse of Psychiatry, established by the Royal College of Psychiatrists in 1978, charged Sneznevsky with involvement in the abuse, 223 and recommended that Sneznevsky, who had been honored as a corresponding fellow of the Royal College of Psychiatrists, be invited to attend the college's court of electors to answer criticisms because he was responsible for the compulsory detention of this celebrated dissident, Leonid Plyushch. Instead Snezhnevsky chose to resign his fellowship. Snezhnevsky wrote the letter to the president of the Royal College. The Royal College has taken a very dubious function of intervening into the inner affairs of national psychiatric associations and using mentally ill patients for political purposes. I sincerely hope that none of the members, seriously believes that in the Soviet Union mentally healthy people could be forcibly put into mental hospitals, 329. The College's Committee on Abuse passed the following judgment, 158. Discredit at the Royal College The evidence is now sufficient to conclude that Professor Sneznevsky has acted unethically and no longer warrants a place of honor in the Royal College of Psychiatrists. In 1968, Snezhnevsky wrote of a distinction between the positive and negative symptoms of schizophrenia, 164 a concept long attributed to Snezhnevsky but in fact introduced by John Hewlings Jackson and John Russell Reynolds. The concept came to be increasingly used in schizophrenia research and classification since 1970s, citing his colleague I.F. Ofkinikov that the symptoms appear to exist as if on two levels. Other Contributions to Psychiatry The American Psychiatric Association at its annual meeting held in San Francisco in 1970 honored Snezhnevsky by naming him a distinguished fellow for his outstanding contribution to psychiatry and related sciences. Snezhnevsky created his own school in psychiatry. The disciples of his school are Ruben Nadzarav, Takshirkais Papadopoulos, Gregory Rothstein, Moisey Vrano, Mara Vartanian, Nikolai Zarikov, Anatoly Anufriev, Nikolai Shumsky, Alexander Tyganov, Irina Shukamatova Pavlova, Anatoly Smulovic. Snezhnevsky worked together with Smulovic every day for 20 years. In the Soviet Union, Snezhnevsky's school alone had the exclusive right to truth and held key positions in psychiatry. Doctors who wished to gain more knowledge were unable to do so, because all textbooks and handbooks on psychiatry described only the views of Snezhnevsky's school. According to the psychiatrist Marina Foykanskia, academician Snezhnevsky and his school have debased, reduced Russian psychiatry to a semi-amateur level and single doctrine about schizophrenia, in the terms of which alcoholic psychoses and alcoholism are considered schizophrenia, congenial idiocy in the children of alcoholics is considered premature schizophrenia, and dissent is considered schizophrenia with delusions of reform. 458. Estimations As reported by the psychiatrist Boris Zubok, who worked at the Koshchenko Hospital under Snezhnevsky and afterwards settled in the USA, Snezhnevsky and his colleagues genuinely believed in their concept of dissent as mental disease and in the method of diagnosis. 228. 
Awards According to Moscow psychiatrist Mikhail Bayanov, Sneznevsky discovered nothing, he muddled everything he attempted, could not find anything, 132. Death According to Moscow psychiatrist Alexander Danilin, the so-called nosological approach in the Moscow psychiatric school established by Sneznevsky boils down to the ability to make the only diagnosis, schizophrenia. Psychiatry is not science but such a system of opinions and people by the thousands are falling victims to these opinions millions of lives were crippled by virtue of the concept sluggish schizophrenia introduced some time once by Andrei Vladimirovich Sneznevsky, academician, whom Danilin called a state criminal. However, the founder of the Moscow Helsinki group Yuri Erlov has the opinion that Sneznevsky was a criminal in the political abuse of psychiatry rather against his will. The real criminal was Georgi Morozov, the director of the Serbsky Institute, who has collaborated with the KGB since his students' days. St. Petersburg academic psychiatrist Professor Yuri Nuller notes that the concept of Sneznevsky's school allowed psychiatrists to consider, for example, schizoid psychopathy and even schizoid character traits as early, delayed in their development, stages of the inevitable progredient process, rather than as personality traits inherent to the individual the dynamics of which might depend on various external factors. The same also applied to a number of other personality disorders. It entailed the extremely broadened diagnostics of sluggish schizophrenia. Despite a number of its controversial premises and in line with the traditions of then-Soviet science, Sneznevsky's hypothesis has immediately acquired the status of dogma which was later overcome in other disciplines but firmly stuck in psychiatry. Sneznevsky's concept, with its dogmatism, proved to be psychologically comfortable for many psychiatrists, relieving them from doubt when making a diagnosis. That carried a great danger. Any deviation from a norm evaluated by a doctor could be regarded as an early phase of schizophrenia, with all ensuing consequences. It resulted in the broad opportunity for voluntary and involuntary abuses of psychiatry. But Sneznevsky did not take civil and scientific courage to reconsider his concept which clearly reached a deadlock. Interesting Facts in his article of 2002, a former president of the American Psychiatric Association Alan A. Stone, who as a member of team had examined Soviet dissident Pyotr Grigorenko and found him mentally healthy in 1979, disregarded the findings of the World Psychiatric Association and the later avowal of Soviet psychiatrists themselves and put forward the academically revisionist theory that there was no political abuse of psychiatry in the Soviet Union. He asserted that Sneznevsky was wrongly condemned by critics and that it was time for psychiatry in the Western countries to reconsider the supposedly documented accounts of political abuse of psychiatry in the USSR in the hope of discovering that Soviet psychiatrists were more deserving of sympathy than condemnation. Helen Lavritsky supposes that a totalitarian regime the lack of a democratic tradition in Russia, and oppression and extermination of the best psychiatrists during the 1930-50 period prepared the ground for the abuse of psychiatry and Russian-Soviet concept of schizophrenia. He was honored with the title of a hero of socialist labor, two orders of Lenin, four orders of the Red Star, and the USSR State Prize. Having learned of his diagnosis of lung cancer and facing his death within a few years, Sneznevsky started lamenting over his making a lot of blunders at the Pavlovian session and departed from his indisputable tone as to his own concept. He died on July 12, 1987 in Moscow and was buried in the Kuntseva Cemetery. 
Snezneski examined Andrei Sly Uzarkuk as a child, was kind to him and presented him the book Your Abilities, man used by Sly Uzarkuk to be taught in the field.